You know, I'm a huge fan of the Universal Audio plugins, and I've had at least one of their UAD cards in my computers since 2003. I was an early adopter. In fact, I continue to hang on to this 11-year-old dinosaur of a PC simply because it can still run my UAD2 Quad PCIe card. That's how much I love those plugins. Now, at the end of 2019, I decided to upgrade my studio with a maxed out Mac Mini, and it is a glorious machine for music production and video editing. The only problem with it is that I can't get my PCIe card in there, and I find myself really missing those plugins. Well, I think you know where this is going, right? All my holiday plans got canceled because of COVID, and since I was having a staycation, I bought myself an Apollo X6 audio interface. It has all those DSP chips built right into it, which means that I am, at long last, reunited with my delicious plugins. I'm very happy about that. A few pieces of housekeeping I wanted to mention at the top of the video. First, I am not sponsored or endorsed by Universal Audio or anybody else. Second, I have worked with UA on certain technical projects and I think very highly of them. I'm mentioning this in the interest of full disclosure. Third, I bought this Apollo X6 and paid for it. This is my private unit. It's not a loaner or something that I got in exchange for making this video. And finally, I don't do Amazon affiliates or any kind of affiliate marketing program. I think those things can be a conflict of interest when, you know, reviewing or talking about gear. So if you like this video, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel in any way that is financially comfortable for you. One of the things that most intrigued me about the Apollo interfaces is their Unison technology. The short story here is that the hardware and the software work together to make it sound as if you are recording through a classic preamplifier or channel strip, like this Avalon 737 SP that I happen to own. Since I own both, I was curious to see if I could hear a difference between my hardware and the plugin. Hey folks, it's Leo from the future, and it looks like I might have built myself a nice new desk in the future, which we can talk about in the future. In the meantime, I just wanted to mention that as I was editing this video, I realized all of the B-roll that I have in the timeline is actually really distracting, and it takes away from the A-B listening test. And I don't want that. I want this to be a really solid listening test for anybody following along at home. So I've made the decision to cut all that stuff out, which means that the second half of this video will be mostly kind of a black screen. And uh, that's not a mistake. That's not an accident. That's actually on purpose. So uh, let's get to it. I've seen videos on YouTube where somebody runs a microphone into one unit and then unplugs that and connects it to the audio interface with the plug-in and then goes back and forth. Now this is a totally fair and real world comparison and I can't really fault it, but it's not scientific enough for this channel. If you watch this channel, you know we like to go deep into the engineering. Now you've probably noticed the big A and B appearing on screen, and yes, that means you are hearing my voice through one preamp or the other. I'm currently recording my voice through a Neumann TLM-103 microphone. I'm recording to both preamps simultaneously through the hardware and the UAD plugin, which are identically set. So it's easy for me to switch preamps back and forth while I edit this video in Final Cut Pro. Now right now you're only hearing the preamp section of the Avalon. I haven't switched on the compressor or EQ sections yet. I'll do that in the next section of this video as I go into detail about how I set this up and made this video. All right, let's talk about the setup. But before I do that, let me mention that I have now switched on the compressor and the EQ section of the Avalon 737. In the plugin, if you look at the presets menu, there is a folder called Avalon Design and under there, there's a preset called Vocals. Now, I have set the hardware to match the preset as closely as I possibly can, and that's what you're hearing now. Right, so there are many ways to compare two preamps, but for me, the most important thing was to get exactly the same signal into both preamps, as in literally exactly the same signal, not me reading the same thing twice. This makes scientific comparison a little bit easier. By having identical signals going through both preamps, it means that variations between takes is eliminated since there's really only one take. For example, if my mouth is one millimeter away from the diaphragm of the microphone between takes, or if my head is at a different angle, or just my voice gets tired between takes, those differences are easily going to overshadow the difference between the preamp and the plug-in, so it's important to get everything in one take. Now, 
My first thought was to use a transformer-based mic splitter, for example, the one made by Radial Engineering in Canada. These boxes are fantastic tools in live sound and are commonly used to split signals in two, three, or four ways and send them over long distances. The problem here is that they use transformers. Transformers are amazing and wonderful things, and I love the color that they can add to my signals, but I don't want that here. I want to actually compare the preamp to the plugin. Even if I had really high-end Jensen or Lundahl transformers, they will add some character and phase distortion. And worse yet, it's not guaranteed that every output is going to have exactly the same signal. I didn't want any variation due to transformers in this comparison. So I consulted with my brother who is an electrical engineer and we spent quite a bit of time thinking about how to do this. In the end, we decided that the fairest, most apples-to-apples -apples test would be to use a simple Y cable to just split the microphone and then use short, identical XLR cables to bring that signal to the preamp and the audio interface. Now I hear a chorus of old-school audio engineers saying, what about the impedance? And you're right. Having a Y cable means that each preamp gets exactly the same signal, but the impedance is not the same as if you had connected that mic directly to the preamp without the Y cable in the way. Now the rule of thumb is that as long as the receiving device, the preamp, has an impedance that's about five to six times higher than that of the transmitting device, or the microphone, you're not really gonna hear much of a difference if it's any higher than that. So. I'm using a TLM-103 here, and fun fact, the TL in TLM-103 actually stands for transformerless. Since it's a transformerless microphone, it actually has a very low impedance output of 50 ohms. So even when the splitter brings the input impedance of both preamps down to 425 ohms, we're still 5 to 6x higher than the output impedance of the microphone, and I actually don't hear a difference at all between using the microphone directly or using a splitter. This might be different if you have a tube mic or something with a higher output impedance. In that case, you might actually notice a difference. But again, the test is still valid because you're feeding the same output impedance into both preamps. All right, phantom power, let's talk about it. It's very important when doing a test like this to do the phantom power properly. Condenser microphones like this TLM-103 need phantom power to work, and since you're plugging it into two preamps, it's very important that only one of them provide phantom power to the microphone. It doesn't matter which one, as long as only one of them is providing the phantom power. All right, I hope you're ready for the big reveal, because here it goes. A was the Apollo X6 with the plug-in, and B was the Avalon 737 hardware. So what do you think? Were you right? Were you wrong? Did you hear any difference at all? Okay, so my thoughts. For me personally, I was blown away at how close these two sounded. I was expecting there to be subtle and recognizable differences, but I just couldn't find them. I listened to these recordings off and on for several days, and I was able to pick out the tiniest sliver of extra little high-end detail above 10k coming from the hardware but not the plug-in. That difference was so small it took me several sessions of critical listening just to notice it. And if somebody stopped me randomly on the street and played just one of these recordings and asked me which one it was, there is no way I'd be able to tell the difference. With differences that small, I'm actually wondering if this isn't just natural variation within tubes or other components in the hardware, or maybe it's just that the golden sample that Universal Audio selected for their plugin had an ever so slightly mellower, more rolled off high end. But the difference is so small that it, it really doesn't matter to me personally. I took my recordings and put them into Isotope RX to see if I could learn more. The spectral analysis of the recordings was virtually identical, so there was not much help there. But if I inverted the phase of one of the recordings, I got really excellent cancellation, which is remarkable. I mean, think about that. One box has four tubes and a bunch of old-school analog engineering, and the other one has state-of-the-art preamps, converters, and DSP doing hardcore math, and yet the result that they provide is so close that it cancels itself out when you flip the phase. Very impressive. One interesting thing that I noticed was that the cancellation wasn't quite as good when you switch on the compressor and the EQ sections, but I think that actually makes sense because you have more stuff in the way. I set those knobs as closely as I can to what I saw on screen in the plugin, 
but there's natural variation among the components. I mean, potentiometers have tolerance, capacitors and resistors have tolerance, and tubes certainly have tolerance. So there's no guarantee that everything is exactly dialed in, and the more stuff that you have, the more variation you're going to see when you try to do this null test. As a special thank you to my Patreon supporters, I'm actually going to post some uncompressed recordings of my voice captured using exactly the same setup. I'll include 24-bit recordings at different sampling rates, so if you want to do uh, critical listening tests in your own studio, you will be able to do that. The files will be available to supporters at any level, even $1 a video. So if this sounds interesting, please head over to Patreon and support the channel if you can. My big takeaway from this was that the plugin really does deliver the sound of the hardware. And I would be happy to use the plugin because I know it can get me the sound that I know and love. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you've gotten something out of it. If so, please like and subscribe and leave your comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.